What's going on everyone? I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic and in this today's video we're going to talk about some uh, one topic that was requested many times on my channel. I thought I got to do a video on that but then I had to collect appropriate data because I wanted to show you um, exactly what I felt about it, the way I've been practicing things and what I think of the whole set of data as always. Um, the whole set of data I'm going to talk about it will be available in the description box and just like I talk about any other YouTuber don't believe in what I'm showing in this video just like that go check out the documents compile it learn from it and that's the actual way to learn so we've got a few products here um, uh, this is a BCA this is a BCA this is a BCA with caffeine this is a BCA used a long time back this is an amino acid complex and it's an essential amino acid formula right so there's so many uh, products in here and the topic of this video is whether you should go for something like this which is like uh, essential amino acid uh, sort of a profile or you should go for BCAA and there have been so many debates and stuff like that which go on on the internet so I'm gonna dig as much as I can uh, with my uh, knowledge and capability and then we can discuss of course on that so start by saying what we know as the essential amino acid and BCA so if you see this whole profile up here and I think you can read it it's all uh, essential amino acid However, the first three, that is leucine, isoleucine, valine, these three are BCAAs, branched chain amino acid. Why they're called branched chain amino acid? Because the structure of the branched chain sort of structure, molecular structure that they have. Apart from that, everything else is the same. They're all essential amino acid. Body can't produce them. You have to provide body with a sufficient quantity of these things so that body can operate properly. So that's what EAAs and BCAs are. So when you're considering a product like this, which is an EA, it has BCAs, um, but when you're having a product like this, these are only BCAs, all right? They don't have EAs. Now that general assumption should be, okay, I should go with this one because it got everything, right? This one as well as the other essential amino acids. So I'm gonna talk about that and then you can take your decision on your own. So first thing, the question whether you should go for BCA or essential amino acid, which is good, which is bad, and basically the whole question of essential amino acid, all these things occurred, uh, I think around 2007 or something like that, around that time where this fellow, Robert Wolf, he uh, published with another researcher a paper, and I'm gonna put the link in the description, of course, for this paper, where he said that BCA supplementation alone is not enough for muscle synthesis or getting your body to an anabolic state so that you can synthesize muscle. So that's what he uh, claimed in that paper and that's that's what triggered the whole essential amino acid products to come on the, internet, uh, on the market and then in this so-called, let me do the code on code, uh, <laughs> fitness YouTubers uh, to start saying that EA is work, BCA is crap and all that thing, right? So because they probably went for the only statement. I'm going to put the link of the actual study out there and uh, the abstract, everything that you can read, all right? So this statement itself, it's more of a half-truth or half-false sort of thing. It was released, uh, I'm, I'm not claiming so, but I'm saying it was released because uh, this person was related to this company called Tribida, uh, which was releasing a MyoHealth uh, product. The MyoHealth is a proprietary blend of essential amino acids that they were releasing at that point. Prior to that, they needed a research or something that was backing the idea that essential amino acids are more important. So I think that's the reason why they released that. And that never changed the fact which one does what, right? But this article created such a rift in the whole market that there were like a plethora of products that came in the picture. People started trading, spreading rumors. They started saying BCAs don't work, they're crap. They call it cancer and stuff like that. And essential amino acids are the holy grail of muscle gain and stuff like that. All right, so now we know what's the source of all this confusion, most probably. Um, now I'm gonna, I, I broke it down because it's gonna be probably long and boring uh, video. I broke it down into sections. So my idea is, and don't need to look at the table totally, and I think you can't read my handwriting like this, but I'm just showing so that you can follow. So there are two usages of BCA, I believe, or essential amino acid um, as intra-workout or post-workout. Most of the time people use those in this way, right? So uh, I don't consider BCA or essential amino acid intake or uptake before a workout because you can take normal food or protein like that and they can do as good. Right, so I don't uh, agree to that philosophy of taking these sort of amino acids before you do your workout. All right, 
Now, if you uh, look at the intro workout requirement for BCAA or essential amino acid, then here's where the requirement comes from. So, see, we, we go to the gym and we're talking in terms of building muscle, right? So, <clears throat> the first thing to trigger uh, building muscle is that you gotta do resistance training and that, that can trigger muscle synthesis where your body will feel that you're not capable of doing something, so you're gonna have muscle tear. That's not called catabolism, all right? That's muscle tear that's necessary for the repa repair to happen and then your body to grow stronger muscle. That's not what you're talking about. When you take intro workout as any amino acid, what happens is that as you do strength training, uh, amino acid oxidation happens and your body starts losing amino acids slowly, gradually, in some cases really fast. So amino acids are required not just for muscle building, but for key functions of your brain and transporting nitrogen across the body. So when that falls and body doesn't really have the essential amino acids, it starts catabolizing your muscle tissue. That can happen. So that's not a tier of muscle, okay? That's simply uh, the other part of your body is uh, cannibalizing or the existing part or mostly skeletal muscle is the existing part that can be cannibalized because of course when your body needs essential amino acid you don't be going down and breaking down the muscle tissue from your heart right that it knows it's clever enough so it'll probably go and uh, break down something from your calf muscle or your biceps or something like that which is the skeletal muscle now if you take um, any sort of amino acid uh, supplementation during our intro workout, what you're trying to do is that you're trying to stop that by providing your body with uh, raw amino acid, essential amino acid most of the time because your body can't produce that. And that's the primary usage. Now, <clears throat> when you use it for post-workout, and I'm going to come to why and which ones you should use, and the other usage is a post-workout. So post-workout, or any time during the day after the workout when you want to have essential amino acid or BCAs, why do you want to supplement with that is because you want to trigger your mTOR pathway. So mTOR pathway is the single most powerful pathway that kind of switches on your muscle synthesis. There are different ways you can switch it on. You can do strength training, resistance training, and you can switch it on. But the easiest way to do that is to supplement yourself with leucine, not BCA, nothing. It's just leucine. <coughs> the one king amino acid, essential amino acid, leucine. So you do that and it, the switch turns on. Now will the engine run or not? That's what we're gonna discuss later. But the switch gets turned on with leucine. So that's where you take the post-workout uh, amino acid. That's the usage of that. So there are two different usage. Now I'm gonna talk about my take on, uh, and as per the researches that I've got uh, the time to read through, and you can read through also from the description what I do and why you should do that <clears throat> if you feel like. So for intro workout, see, you're trying to stop the catabolism, all right? So you can either take BCA or EA, of course, because EAs are having all the amino acid along with the BCAs, right? That's what you can do. You can take EAs and you can take BCAs. You can, any, any of these you can do, but there's a catch. So in EAs, there is a essential amino acid called a tryptophan. Now, tryptophan and valine, they too compete for the uh, single uh, receptor of the brain, which uh, controls the sensitivity to a particular hormone called serotonin. Now, that I've written here, I know you probably won't be able to read it, but it's serotonin. So what happens <coughs> if you have tryptophan um, in your intro workout, for example, you're having EA like this stuff in your intro workout, and that obviously has tryptophan. It is a precursor to the production of stern, uh, serotonin. Now, serotonin is going to go signal your brain. It's a neuroreceptor, actually. It is, it's, it, this hormone is going to go signal your brain that, hey, you're fatigued. Stop. So it's sort of a blocker, right? It's a, it's a control system. It's there for good. But then if it's there and you're supplementing with it, that is, you're giving your body more of it then more serotonin and the chances that you could have done a couple of reps more but your brain is signaling you you're tired and that actually happens if you supplement too much with EAA during your workout I've seen that happen not just this there's any sort of thing that has a tryptophan in it that happens you're better off with BCA there why because BCA also competes for the same receptor but BCA has a higher bonding capacity to that receptor so that it goes faster to that. So let's say you already have some tryptophan in you 
and it's trying to go for that receptor to tell that okay uh, release some serotonin and let the brain know that we're tired now BCA uh, valine is also gonna uh, run for that and valine is gonna clog it up and stop the release of serotonin where your body will not even feel fatigue that's why if you, you know, use BCA during workout as an intro workout it's gonna work better because it's uh, supplementation without uh, tryptophan and that's why I prefer I actually don't use it as an intro workout right now I don't have any BCA supplementation but if I had I would have taken it as an intro workout uh, because uh, that's the only benefit that it does apart from the fact that uh, BCAs form about 20 to 30 percent of skeletal muscle tissue so that's a huge portion of the skeletal muscle tissue the other thing which is good and bad for BCA is that these are the three amino acids which are which are not oxidized in liver they get oxidized in your skeletal muscle tissue so when you do strength training resistance training your BCA level drops so fast that you can't even imagine it's fast way faster than any other amino acid so if you uh, top off on BCAA during your workout that's gonna work way better than if you top off only with EAA or only I'd say with EAA because it comes with tryptophan and in most cases it would come with less amount of BCA right so I would always say um, if you're trying to take it as an intro workout go for BCA so that's the derivation out there now coming to post workout as I said the mTOR pathway has to be triggered and it can be triggered without leucine or cell if you do strength training you can do uh, you can trigger that um, there are other ways to trigger that as well but you got to understand something when you take leucine that's a really easy way to trigger that on off switch of muscle synthesis but that on off switch is not enough to actually do muscle synthesis your body needs all the other eight essential amino acid also so as a post-workout if you just take BCA supplementation, that's probably not going to do as good as you might think it should. Rather, if you take per normal whey protein, that's going to do better because it has the whole profile of um, essential amino acids. So the whole profile is present in whey protein. So in that case, I'd say if you really want to fast track that, make it even better, then you should go with any, any sort of uh, amino acid or essential amino acid complete profile rather than BCA because. It, it, just the starting the engine is not the big thing. It needs to go on and create the muscles and synthesize muscle. That's not going to happen unless it has the all uh, nine essential amino acid present. Now, this is going to be a huge problem for people who are vegetarian because a lot of vegetarian food sources lag the whole profile or spectrum of essential amino acid. And even if they have it, that's pretty less in uh, the number that's required. All right. So that's that's uh, what I think you should be or I do as pre uh, intra and post workout of EA and BCA usage. Now there are a few other things that I want to talk about BCA before we close this video and I already talked about it uh, a bit but you need to understand it, that oxidization of uh, BCA happens in skeletal muscles so its level drops and goes high in the skeletal muscle way faster than any other amino acid. The other thing is that <laughs> BCAs are hydrophobic. I showed that in one of my videos. I think in this video I showed that it's hydrophobic and uh, that's one way for you to understand whether BCA supplement is good or not because it's not going to mix that well in the water. But the other important thing is that there are globular muscle tissues or globular protein I would say uh, which are like a, a, you know round like protein strands and the inside those are formed mostly with uh, hydrophobic protein like uh, methanin, BCA, stuff like that. And it's important for that to have that formation because uh, an hydrous location is necessary for the enzymes to work better in those protein strands. So uh, that's one other requirement. The other thing is that 20 to 30 percent of your skeletal muscle is formed with BCA or any sort of protein is formed with this. So if you take any sort of protein source you know, say I get 20 to 30 percent of that is BCA so you need to understand that BCA forms a huge portion so BCAs are important but uh, the idea or the whole crux of this video comes down to when you should take which supplement is very important and I think the key takeaways would be that you go to the gym for building muscle if that's your purpose and you want to keep on repping a few more reps then definitely don't go for EAs go for BCAs because obviously the absence of tryptophan and the presence of more valine is gonna let you push more the other thing is that if you want to 
uh, trigger muscle growth uh, post-workout and of course BCA alone can do the trick so you better off with intra work on the EA supplementations so that the whole spectrum is available and the engine doesn't start it just keeps going also so I think that was uh, what I had for this video if you uh, don't agree with me definitely leave your comment because I'm not the know-all sort of person I just collected the data and I use it in my life also if you found this video helpful, please do share it, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I thank you a lot for spending all the time in this video. Have an awesome life, folks.